más que ser una empresa, es una forma de vivir. Es una forma de... de hacer los cambios en Guatemala. Hello, my name is Aria Harrell. I'm 19 years old and I am the producer and co-writer of Respirando Vida Nueva. So uh, how I started off in film is in 2019, I got the chance to attend the Sundance Directors Lab as an actress. Actually in a film that just came out, shout out to Pretty Red Dress, it's so amazing. And I got the chance to see how much goes into filmmaking at a young age, because sometimes you get into the filmmaking world and you're like, whoa, I didn't know that it took this much. But I was super inspired by the stories and um, it encouraged me to keep acting, which I did in a lot of other short films and web series. And I was seeing more and more what, it, what went into production. And one day I was like, I want to make a film. So in 2021, I created a film, a psychological thriller about human trafficking, which won an international award at the Connector Film Festival. And that really inspired me to keep going. So I applied to film schools, got in, and now I'm at UM. So before I, uh, before I worked on this uh, documentary, I hadn't really had a lot of experience with uh, more like budgeted films. I've only worked on three student films before this project, and then when I was a little kid, I used to make uh, films with my little si or with my older sister. Uh, we just, used to just mess around with uh, our dad's phone camera and my mom's phone camera, and we used to just kind of have those little homemade films. So for our documentary, um, the idea was brought to me and Arya through my professor Sanjeev Chatterjee, and he basically told us about a man in Guatemala that wanted to make a bigger impact. And then I feel like that really uh, captivated me and Aria to go out and make this film with them and kind of expose him more to have better ch or a better chance to get his product out there. Respirando Vida Nueva, which translates to Breathing New Life, is a powerful 10 minute short documentary about a man named Marco who created an eco-friendly alternative to open fire wood stoves through his company, Ecoco Mao. It highlights the transformative power of one individual to change the lives of millions of people, which he is doing. Um, the issue is centered around carbon emissions, which is really detrimental to people's respiratory health, psychological issues, and um, honestly, our environment. We developed it throughout the course of three months. I met with Marco, uh, the, char or the main character, and the person who came up with the stove called Deco Comal. Uh, I met with them for about three months before we went out to Guatemala. I met with them two times a week. And through that, we kind of just developed um, the story structure and how like we came up with the mood board, and the, not really like the shot list, but also the shot list, just kind of shots that we had in mind. We familiarized ourselves with Guatemala City before we got there by looking at it on the map and kind of just like laid out the groundwork before we got there. He told us he wanted to raise money, um, gain investors. So that's why we had this idea of connecting Marco to the people to show his impact and his incredible story. Some of my favorite films are um, Everything Everywhere All At Once because I feel like that film really captivates what a small story can be like when it's exploded with stylistic choices. Uh, it's a film that is really personal to me because I feel like it has a realistic portrayal over the mother's relationship with the daughter and it has a really important uh, kind of like showing of the immigrant culture coming from a whole different place and the struggles that they go through while at the same time bringing the mother's relationship and the daughter's relationship closer together as the story progresses and then another uh, film that i really really like uh, would have to be blade runner 2049 um, I recently rewatched it and I realized how much I like the cinematography in it and the coloring. I think that it is really great and that they did a really great job with that film. Some of my favorite films are Get Out, obviously it's such an amazing film, um, Divergent, Lucy, those are all kind of psychological thrillers which are the narrative films that I like to make. and. Um, I think they just really do a good job at entertaining while telling you a very metaphorical issue that's happening in society. Um, aside from the more deeper films, I love Dreamgirls. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of Burlesque. Uh, let's see, Bridesmaids. Honestly, because they do the exact opposite of those films, I kind of just like to be engrossed in the movie and not really think about life. And they're just so fun. I love musicals, I love comedies, and yeah, those are some of my favorites. My directing style as a documentary director would kind of be more hands-on. Uh, I like to have, uh, get a hold of the camera, 
kind of get some shots in before I tell my ACs or my director of photography what I had in mind, kind of show them where my mind is going. Uh, I also really like doing non-scripted interviews. So kind of just asking people to tell me stories about their life, kind of tell us about the product that they're making. Uh, for example, in this film and in, the, uh, in this documentary, when we interviewed Marco, we had some questions lined up and I didn't feel like that would be the right tone for the emotion that we were trying to get from him. So I kind of just asked him to tell me like his story of growing up in uh, Guatemala and what that was like for his family, especially being exposed to open fire stoves. And I feel like that's a more practical approach since, well, it can be unpredictive or you can't really know what's gonna happen. You get a more personal and intimate feel from that. If I were given a budget, I think the ideal film that I would make would not actually be a psychological thriller. I wanna move into this genre of action comedy about a suburban black female superhero who uses her perfectionism to try to fix the world because I think growing up as a black female from the suburbs there's a certain naivety you have about the world that kind of dissipates as you go into college and you experience microaggressions and the things that you were sheltered from as a child and I would love to show that perspective of the world with like a soundtrack of Ari Lennox, Tyler the Creator, Steve Lacey, Anderson Pack, because those are the music that I listen to and I think a lot of my friends listen to so I think it would be really cool to do that kind of film. My ideal idea for the film that I would make with the budget I really like psychological horrors because like get out and movies like that because i feel like it's a true exploration of what a person's deepest fears are and the person's real like personality is so i would like to experiment with that concept a little bit more maybe doing something about um imposter syndrome uh something along those lines and i think that that whole landscape is really interesting at least to me it is as a female producer specifically in a male dominated industry it's kind of hard to balance being likable and polite with taking charge so i found that my best approach was creating a schedule once we finished the breakdown weeks before sharing with everyone specifically um the director the dp and the main crew so that they're aware of it and we can adjust um in the earlier half and then once we get on set sticking to that schedule and adding in a safety day so i always have a fun a safety day so that we have time to get those extra shots especially with um documentaries because you can get caught up in b-roll and you lose track of time so it's cool to have that safety day to say okay if we don't get it now we can get it on that day um my relationship with aria writing was actually really great we kind of both had the same goal in mind we wanted to get marco's story out there and that was the primary objective. So we kind of wrote around him. We made the whole story around him. We picked the individuals around him and then we kind of just centered him because he is the main reason why we made this. He's the main reason why we wanted to spread awareness and working with Aria was a blast. We both got to know each other a lot more and I really treasure working with her and I'm excited to work with her for their projects, especially next year. So a film technique that I'm really comfortable with, it's not really a technique, but as a producer, I would say post-production and networking are reaching out to the best of the best um, with, within my network of people to make sure that the film is very high quality from sound design to color, just making sure that the film is professional so that it gets the attention that it deserves. The filmmaking techniques I'm most comfortable uh, using are editing, cinematography, and directing. I really, really enjoy cinematography and everything that has to do with camera work. I would say that I have a good eye for some stuff. I don't mean to like praise myself too much, but I, I really, really enjoy cinematography and that I just like, I just learned that through watching a bunch of films and kind of remembering certain shots and certain directing styles. And then I kind of just like, whenever I watch a film, I usually try to think how they made that shot happen instead of like, I fo also focus on the story, but I shots that are really interesting to me, I really do think really deeply about how they made that happen and how I could recreate that. Uh, so for now, uh, I am in the process of writing a film that I'm gonna work on all through next year, and it's gonna be about Mezcal. I don't really have the clear concept yet. Uh, it's still in development, but I have another project with Aria and we're going to be, I'm going to be the DP for that project. I already did, read the script, I met the director, he's a great guy, and I'm just really excited to start working that. And I want to also develop another film that's going to be a psychological thriller slash like horror. So, but that's not going to be till probably at the end of the year. But I'm really excited for next year because I feel like there's going to be more opportunities to practice more of my work and get to showcase it in 
more places if I'm able to, and I'm really thankful for the opportunity. Thank you. So the next film that I'm planning on producing is a film that I'm actually making with Manuel. He'll be the DP. A student from UM brought us a script, which was amazing. We made some revisions, and I think it has the potential to do really well in the film festival circuit. It's a thriller romance-ish. I'm not used to romance, but I'm used to thrillers, so I think it'll be a fun challenge. And I think the story is just so good. I'm really excited for it.